Hi, this is Kurt with Traverse Tool Company. Today we're going to talk about how to identify and figure out the size of your Morse taper. To start with, let's take a look at some samples of tapers that are not Morse. So this one, for example, is a 5C collet. It has a straight body and a small taper on top. You notice a keyway down here. These two are R8. You can see the keyway in here too. A straight body, short taper on top. And what distinguishes a Morse taper is that it has one continuous taper from the largest diameter to the smallest diameter. Some shanks that have a Morse taper on them also have on the other end of them a Jacobs taper. We're going to talk more about those a little bit later. So now we determined what a Morse taper is. Now let's get into measuring it. So when it comes to a Morse taper shank, there's a pretty big variety of ways you can measure these. When it comes to a spindle though, there's really only one practical way to do that. So we're gonna show you all of them. To start with, let's measure the Morse taper on the spindle. So I took this tailstock off my lathe and there's a Morse taper inside of there. It's real easy to measure the outside of this, which is the large diameter. There's no way I'm going to get inside and measure the small diameter down inside this hole somewhere. And it's kind of hard to measure the length of it. So all I'm going to do is measure the, the larger diameter, but that's all I need to do. So let's take a look at it. I'm just going to stick the calipers in there just a little bit. And I'm looking at a measurement of roughly around 698, somewhere in that range. It's hard to measure exact because you're measuring a taper. But if you look at your chart, if you look in the large end column, if you go down, you'll see a 0.700. And I measured 698. That's only two thousandths off. That's pretty close. So what that tells you is I have a number two Morse taper in this spindle. So take a look at the number one on the large end and you'll see it's 475 and the number three is a 938. So if you're even remotely close on your measurement, it'll nail down exactly what size you have because they're so far away from each other. Now let's take a life center and measure the shank on that to see what Morse taper this is. So I'm going to measure the large diameter and somewhere close to the end of it. And where I'm taking the measurement is at about 695. So I already know my number two is a 700. So I'm five thousandths off. That's plenty close enough. So I know this is a number two Morse taper. And I know my spindle is a number two Morse taper. And there it is. That's how it works. As I mentioned, just measuring one thing, which we did the large diameter, is enough to nail down exactly what your Morse taper size is. But here's some other ways to measure. So let's take this shank and I'm going to measure the small diameter. And I have about 587, 588. Go into my trusty chart and looking at the small end. And the number two is 572. So yeah, I'm a few thousandths off. But again, look at the one below it and the one above it, and they're so far off that you know it has to be the number two. So here's another way to measure it. Just get a tape roller. Nothing accurate about it, but just measure the length. This is not a Morse taper on the top. This is the Jacobs taper we're going to talk about later. So don't measure that. Only measure the Morse taper. I have about two and a half inches roughly. And look at the length in our chart. And we have 2.56. So that's about two and nine sixteenths. So that again tells us this is a number two Morse taper. And one other way to measure a Morse taper is taper per inch. For that, we're going to use the help of a couple of one, two, three blocks and a ground aluminum plate. So what I'm going to do is take my Morse taper shank, put it between the one, two, three blocks, 
I'm going to cheat a little bit and use digital calipers. And I'm going to hold the jaws of the calipers down firmly against the one, two, three blocks. Oh, in the inch position, that's important. So I'm holding the jaws down on the one, two, three blocks, closing them in against the taper. And that's where I'm going to zero the calipers. And that's why I like to use digital calipers for this example. So I'll take that off. And now the calipers are zeroed right to that position on the taper. Now I'm going to take the one, two, three blocks from one inch up to two inches. Straddle it again. Use the calipers, hold those jaws down. And what I'm getting is 0 0.0525 on my measurement. So I measured one inch and two inches and it's 0 0.0525. So I go to my chart and look under taper slash inch. And the one that's 0 0.0525, well, let's see. Here's a 0 0.0526. That's pretty close because the calipers I have don't measure to tenths, only, only half a thousandth. So uh, this is a number five Morse taper. Just a little word of caution on using that method to measure your Morse taper. Literally every other way that I explain to you is easy to get exactly the right taper because from one to the one size to the next size is a mile apart from each other. For the 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 uh, taper per inch, they're very very close. If you take a look at the chart, you'll see they're very just a tenth or two away from each other. So it's a kind of an interesting way to measure it, but be careful when you're doing it that way. Some of the common places you'll find a Morse taper is in a lathe tailstock. I've never seen a tailstock that did not have some size Morse taper in it. As long as we're talking about lathes on the smaller ones, the headstock might have a Morse taper in it, and it might not. The bigger ones won't. Uh, other places you'd find a Morse taper, a drill press. Just about every drill press made has a Morse taper spindle in it. And Kind of uncommonly, but still possible, is a, a manual milling machine. Most of them are an R8 spindle, but some still could be a Morse. A little while ago, you might remember that I mentioned a Jacobs taper. So this is an arbor that has a Morse taper on one side and a Jacobs taper on the other side. The only application I'm aware of for a Jacobs taper is to mount the arbor to a drill chuck that also has a Jacobs taper inside of it. So you just mount it like that, and it's there. Thank you for watching this video. Obviously you noticed how helpful that chart was to me. If you want your own copy of it, just click on the link below.